Hey guys, good God evening. It's almost, it's almost seven o'clock. Oh well, I am here. I am Rosie J doing it God's way each and every day. I am the wealth doctor. Well, mm. so how did I get here? You know, I often wonder how did I get here and where am I? I'm in the place of abundance where everything I do, I see other ways. Every experience I try, I look for the goodness, the lesson to be learned. So many times we'll say, oh, I'm from a uh, dysfunctional family. But really, am I? Was my family dysfunctional or were they just living their life and I just happen to be in the midst of it? Learning my lessons. And I think that's the way it is. You know. I could probably think about my family and the experiences that I had in a negative fashion. But they actually brought me right here where I am, doing the things that I do. I was looking at this movie called The Um Education of Little Tree today. Because I try to look at good things. And in this story, it was about a young Indian who was adopted by an uh, uh, all-American family, I guess. And it was in the early days, like during the time in the 1800s, perhaps, before when cars were just being done in, and uh, these horse and buggy times. Hey, Diria, how are you? And this movie was so profound. The things that happened to Little Tree, who was a young man, young boy, were kind of horrendous. This was the time when Indians and these white folks who were taking over the land were being very negative and putting the Indians on a reservation and just treating them like crap. And you know, we were probably doing some other things too. They were happening things that were happening to us. Hey, Clarissa. But in this movie, this little boy was being educated by this white family. I kind of think that they were um, connected because he was telling the story. Little Tree was telling the story. So he's talking about his grandmother and his grandpa and, and this other Indian gentleman. And I think they were all connected. And the grandmother used to always tell him that they were closer to the other side, but they would always be there in a spiritual way for them. So he used to talk to him. This little boy was taken from them and put into this Indian day, this camp for children. They were supposed to, the white folks were trying to educate him, but they tried to change his whole being. They wanted him to forget about the fact that he was an Indian. They didn't want him to speak the language or anything. So his grandparents, his grandfather, his white grandfather came and kidnapped him, took him out of that experience and brought him back home. And soon he died. But the grandmother used to always tell him, our bodies may leave this earth, but our spirits will always be here with you. So when they died, the Indian who I think was his grandfather on the Indian side, came and got him. And he taught him all about his culture as an Indian. And then he died. And the experience that this young gentleman um, was, was having was a spiritual experience being right here on this earth where he could combine both his, his uh, mix, half white, half Indian and learn from it. And as I was looking at this movie, I was thinking about how true is that? You know, I came here in a mixture of all kinds of cultures. You know, I had um, cousins that looked white. My grandfather looked like a white man. My, my grandmother on my mother's side looked like an Indian. And so did my father's side. And somewhere in the midst of that, 
became the African American slavery part, you know, because of course in Washington, D.C., it was highly populated with slaves. You saw the story, um, what is it, what, the, the story that talked about the slave, the man who was captured and became a slave and he stayed in Washington. But Washington had a lot of black folks. We used to be called the Chocolate City. But I was thinking about, what I was thinking about is how was my family truly dysfunctional? And what lessons did they teach me that arrived here? You know, I remember when I went to St. Thomas, I, when I first got to St. Thomas, and this was back, I left here in 1975. And when I first got to St. Thomas, <clears throat> excuse me, what I noticed about St. Thomas was of course the language they spoke real fast, but I could understand it. I also noted that the love that they, how they greeted each other, you know, it was nothing for a man or a woman to come up to you and kiss you and hug you and say good night. We greeted each other in love. And I was very new to this because my family wasn't that kind of family. I had one aunt who showed emotion. So we are a lot of a lot of times we come from these families that are not dysfunctional. They just don't know how to love. They don't know how to express and tell how they feel. Well, I didn't know that, and I had to learn that. So I learned a lot while I was in St. Thomas around going around to the different islands. And um, I guess I was truly blessed because my name is Rosa Hodge, and Hodge is a very popular name in St. Thomas. So when people saw my name, they assumed that I was from the Caribbean, which was fine with me. I had no problem with that because, of course, I came from a chocolate city. So I, living in the islands was a perfect place for me to grow. But I wasn't really consciously aware of all these things that I'm telling you. It wasn't until I came back to D.C. and I met um, the Hanafi Muslims that I started really thinking about a spiritual life. And from that, I went into a whole lot of other stuff. But lo and behold, I made it to 2008. Now, all along that path, I was different than my family. I expressed my love in, in, in more ways than one. I was not afraid to tell people how, what I truly believed and how I felt, even adamantly. <laughs> I have to say that. So is our family really dysfunctional? I don't think so. My family is huge and every one of them is here to serve a purpose. Every one of them, you know, even the ones that society wants to say is not correct or mentally challenged. Even the ones who are gay and Muslims and the society looks down on them. I, I, everyone I meet either teaches me a lesson or I teach them. You know, it's so amazing because people have always said, Rosa, you talk like a teacher. And I also talk maybe sometimes a little rough. Oh, it sounds rough. But I'm very honest about how I feel. And I'm not afraid to tell you. And I'm learning how to express myself in a more loving fashion. But it didn't come overnight. It doesn't come overnight. It is a process of reading the right books. Reading, look, as Master Kemp said today. Was it Master Kemp? No. You create um, this organization that's on YouTube. And they were talking about the things that you do to heighten your sense of consciousness. Some of the things that you have to do. And I did them. I don't look at the news. And you know, I let me say this. I look at it once in a while and it's only be for about five minutes, just to check. And nothing changes. I don't put those negative fashion things in my head. 